You know, after a while, I'm drawn to the inescapable conclusion that this country is run by half-wits, bigots, racists, dipshits, and lame brains. Yeah, they've got no class, no imagination, no foresight, no hindsight. If anyone has an original thought, they do anything to discredit them. So I think, shit, I gotta get out of here. Next thing, I'm in London, sitting in a bar, and guess what? I'm homesick. Ah, oh, is there no escape? Oh, it's good to be back. I guess there's no place like home. What took you so long? <laughs> Ooh. Come on, we're in the car park. Why do they always search me? You know, I've tried looking calm, aggressive, bored, tense, vacant. I've even tried putting my dirty underwear on top to put them off. Oh, wow. You know Heathrow, London Airport? The customs joker sits there all day reading his book. Every now and then he'll look up and pluck someone out. Can't be more than one in a thousand. Guess who got plucked? I can't imagine. Why me? I never have anything. Is this your bag? Yeah, I haven't finished unloading. I only got back last night. The house is a bit of a mess. They turned the power off while I was gone. So I went in this morning and had a yell at them. They said it would be back on by the time we got there. The Prime Minister's party was boring. Now, how can you write anything if nothing happens? Well, Africa can't have been boring. Nah, that was the best part of it. How was the funeral? Terrible. I mean, he was my father. Even if we never saw much of each other. I couldn't stop crying. I wandered around Century City for hours afterwards in a daze. Grief, I suppose. Later, I went to see his partner, Mr. Witten. He's a good friend of the family's. He was Dad's Los Angeles attorney. Dad had this small company that did research into superconductors. God knows how he expected to make any money from that. Anyway, I fell asleep on Mr. Witten's sofa, and when I woke up, Mr. Witten was gone. And there were these men having some kind of meeting in the back of the room. I think they were Germans. They hadn't noticed me because the couch had its back to them. But when they did, boy, did they get snaky. Arrogant bastards. Sweet home. If it isn't cub reporter, Jimmy Olsen. Can't be much muck to rake around here. Why don't you piss off? It's my house. Inspector Evans. <laughs> Why don't you burn it down for the insurance? What's the story? Gas explosion. My guess is there was a gas leak. An electrical fault set it off. The house has been vacant. They switched the power back on today. We get a few of these. Thanks, Bill. I was hoping someone you'd done it in your column. Put a bomb in there to blow your bloody head off. Someone like you? Yeah. Someone like that. Friend of yours? Evans. Did a story suggesting he had more assets than his police salary could buy. He's a nerd. What do you think? It's a motel. No, about the gas. Gas? Hey, does natural gas have a smell? Yeah, they put a smell in it. Did you smell any? No. Did you use the gas at all? I fried some bacon this morning. And turned it off properly? Uh-huh. Positive? I checked. So the gas began leaking after you left? Must have. How can gas just start leaking? Everything's off now.
Melissa, take a look at this. This was off. It was behind the cylinder. I remember putting it back on before I went away, when I was trying to body the meter. This wire looks like it was wired across the cylinder in a dead short. Would that make a spark when the power came on? Better than that, it would spark when the cylinder came on. The power board sends a signal down through the mains to turn the hot water on at 11.30 a.m. It's called a ripple switch. Whoever put this wire on would know exactly when it would blow. If it hadn't been for customs holding you up, we would have been here by then. Someone tried to kill us? Anything else? I'm being followed. As I drove over here, I was followed by a yellow hatchback. I'm not sure what make. He was clever and stayed a fair way back. I made a number of detours, but he stayed with me. I think you're paranoid. I came here for help. You came here for what? You journalists are all the same. You don't mind making a cheap living out of throwing muck at the cops, but the minute something goes wrong, what do you do? You call on us. Oh, what do you expect? You're a public utility to be used by the public whose usefulness should be monitored by the public. Just like the shithouses down the corner of Queen and Wyndham Streets. This time, Alf, I think you're going to find that you've shat on us once too often. Okay, lady, what's the story? Why are you following me? Listen, Buster, I'll tell you why, because I can't get past you, because you drive in the middle of the bloody road as though you own it. That's why. You got your licence? But they give out licences to mental retards like you. Well, if you're not following me, why take the sharp turn at the top of Vincent Street? Is this some kind of come on? I think I'm that desperate. Piss off, you scabby nerd. I wouldn't screw you for practice. Wake up, Dozy! Get out of the way! Piss off! Don't be bugger! Jerk! Recent. They were found embedded in the underseal of your car. It seems the car was close to the house when the explosion occurred. There were marks on the brake line, consistent with it being hit with flying debris, enough to weaken the line. So you see, your theory about some unknown assassin crawling under the vehicle is remote. Although I'm not at all surprised that that is a conclusion you would lead to. But I'll tell you this, Mr. Winters, I'm becoming irritated with your visits and your fatuous theories. In fact, if they do not cease, I will have to get two independent police doctors to certify you insane. Lock you in a padded cell, throw away the key. What I'm saying is, this case is closed. Bloody brilliant. If bullshit was music, you'd be a bloody brass band. I take it you don't agree with his explanation. If foot was shit, he'd die of constipation. <laughs> well, you better think about it. I mean, after all, they had their experts go to the trouble of examining the... car. Well, they always do. It was their so-called experts that put Arthur Allen Thomas in jail for murder for ten years. And the experts seem to be able to prove anything they like. Somebody's been in my bag. Wasn't it locked? 
Yeah, and you know me. I always pack the same way. Hair dryer on the left, jewelry box, upper right-hand corner. That makes me real uneasy. Let's get out of here. G'day, folks. Welcome to the island. Hello, ma'am. Picked a nice day for it. Well, give us a hand, will you, mate? Where are you off to? Which side B, please? Which side B? No sweat. Hey, let's slam that door. Busy little island, this. Seven cabs, 600 registered vehicles, 5,200 permanent residents, and quarter million rabbits. You gonna do any hunting? No. You should do. You're doing us a favour. Good eating, those rabbits. Most of them is white. The day trippers come over here in their thousands at Christmas time. They bring their tents and batches, caravans and motorhomes and lots of kids. And you know what they give their kids for Christmas? Rabbits. White rabbits. Oh, the kids love them. For a few days they love them anyway. Then they get bored with them, see? And the parents have got to feed and look after them. So when the holidays end, they can send up a percentage and take them back to the city. On well, the rabbits, that is. So they let them loose and they head for the hills and breed. Like rabbits. They dig holes. They make them this place look like a Swiss cheese. Bloody things. Good eating, though. You should try hunting them. No one knows we're here. So if someone was here waiting to deal to us, no one would ever know. Oh, Al. Well. What are you looking for? The bolt. For the rifle. Why do you want it? Shoot rabbits. Relax, Alf. Why don't you go fishing? Have you seen it? It's in the top shelf by the sink. Thanks. Watch this. Were you expecting the Viet Cong? Oh yeah, mate, just hop on the back. Don't slam the door. Thanks, pal. Bit of a hunter, eh? Good spot for it. Lots of rabbits here. White ones. Where are you heading? And the New Zealand computer would tell them what flight it was on, so they'd know when I'd be home. Data bank computer would tell them that I made automatic rent payments and the address, so they'd know where I live. And that I got a mortgage on this here so they'd know where I hide. So they let them loose and they head for the hills. On well, the rabbit sitters. Breed. I like rabbits. You know, by asking the right questions, they can probably even predict what we're going to do next. Uh, uh, don't slam the door. Thanks, pal. The dig holes. Making this island look like a Swiss cheese. Money thinks. Why don't I keep on doing this? If you try to buy a car with cash, the dealer rings the cops. Thinks you're a drug dealer or something. Bingo, you're on the computer again. Alfie, you're paranoid. No, I'm not. I'm not paranoid. Um. Randy.
trees. Jesus! My pants are out there. Stay put, I'll check, see if it's safe. Sights, stalking you through the bush, gets the drop on you. Girlfriend yells, and you, half pissed with a shitty old 22 that you haven't fired for six years, and you weren't a very good shot then. And our ballistics experts tell us, at sights that were a mile out of line, swing around and shoot this man who can't get a clear shot at you, so presumably you can't get a clear shot at him through the heart. Right. Well, I'd that. I don't give a damn whether you believe it or not. That's what happened and Melissa will back me up. Well, you'd better start giving a damn, Alf. Because what we're talking about here is a manslaughter charge. And as you live with that woman, she's a prejudiced witness and her evidence wouldn't be worth a pinch of shit to a top-class prosecutor. And you could be looking down the barrel of five years in jail. How many years do you reckon I'm looking at if I don't go to jail? I'd oh, be naive. Nobody's trying to kill you. You got your bail. You got me things on the way out. Evans! What do you really think about all this? Well, I think that you're an objectionable bastard and a dangerous little paranoid, and I think we could come close to nailing you. Now, piss off. He wouldn't know if the postman was up him unless he blew his whistle. I thought so. Oh, I'm glad you agree. You know, he wouldn't know if his ass was punched mm. aboard or countersunk. There's someone following us. The Jag. I'll shake him. You can shake up a Jag in this? You bet your sweet ass I can. <laughs> Let's 
girl behind us. Then I'll just have to try harder. Hold on. <laughs> Too, love. Grand Hotel, please. And by the way, you were great. Oh, thanks. Someone's been in. He's been broken. I stuck this here across the door. It's a trick I saw in a James Bond movie. Touch any of this stuff? Yeah, well, I wouldn't dream of it. Prices alone are enough to give you a heart attack. How can I get away from these pricks? Can't even leave town without jumping bail. This is driving me crazy. Why would they chase us through the town? What the hell's happening? Someone's trying to kill me. Oh, Alf. This is Auckland, not Chicago or Shanghai. You saw that, Hunter. How else do you explain it? Maybe he was perping at us. After all, we did give him a bit to look at. Oh! Hey, oh. 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 To hell with the bell. Let's get out of here. Mr. and Mrs. Green, you'll find it in the computer. Mr. and Mrs. K.G. Oppenheimer. That's us. Uh, that must be yours. Thank you. Well, there's ours. Oh, must have got left behind in Christchurch. They're doing alterations to the luggage area. We've had quite a bit of this. Uh, I'll get on to it for you. Well, when are we going to get them? Tomorrow. They always arrive the next day. Uh, call back at this time and see the girl upstairs. They'll be here. Stupid. 
right thing to do. <laughs> Somebody's trying to kill us. Someone is really trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who is it? Housekeeping. Do you need any towels? No, we don't. Go away. I'm scared. <laughs> so am I. Who's doing this to us? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You're safe now. Who are we? Like it. Well, there she is. That's uh, that's the pick of her. That's the pick of the bunch. How much? Uh, seven hundred. Seven hundred. And I suppose it only had one owner. A little old lady who only drove it on Sundays. Well, actually, she's an ex-rental. Uh, a mate of mine thrashed the ring out of for a fair bit. Bought her in here. See if I could find some bunny to fit into it. That's remarkably frank of you, Cyril. Cyril. Well, there's not a lot of commission in a seven hundred dollar vehicle. I'm not going to muck about all day selling it. He doesn't want it anyway. Tell us about it. Well, uh, the body works pretty well rooted, uh, as you can see, but, uh, well, they never give up these old sixes, do they? You know, a little hard to start, a little hard to start. Runs like a haunted shit house for a bit, but once she warms up, uh, there's a lot of grunt under here. I wouldn't be surprised if you got the ton out of this, you know, on a decent downhill run, you know, with a brisk northerly up your freckle. Goes like a strangled fart. I reckon you got uh, 5,000 miles out of this before it craps out completely. It's got to be worth four or 500 in parts. A bit hard getting a warrant, of course. No brakes and one thing and another. Fortunately, I happen to have a warrant. It's not for this vehicle, but I will sell it to you and I will include that in the 700. 650. Cash. Done. I don't believe it. Uh, park it on a slope. How are you, Jack? Al Fuentes. What are you doing down here? You're on the run? Yeah. It's an ex-rental. Had the ring flogged out of it. We know. Well, let's give you a hand as best we can. No, but I reckon you'll be safe around here. Well, if anyone comes around here, we would soon hear about it. There's no one in that place at the top of the hill at the moment. Right. You'll like it. God, what a place. Isn't it great? Ugh. There you are, safe and sound. Thanks. Have a nice day. Prognini's Trognostovich. Hey? Prognini's Trognostovich. 
Don't live here. That I'd say there's no one in that name within ten mile of here. I'll decide. Oh. Sorry. The mate must have put me cook. What's that name again? Bognani Stronostovich. Ah, never heard of it. Thanks anyway. You shouldn't have carted all that up by yourself. I suppose I, I suppose I should have climbed all the way up with one of them, dragged you all the way back down, and carted another bloody one up. What's wrong? I was followed. Two men in a late model Mercedes. Oh God! How the hell did they find us? Bugger if I know. Nobody knows we're here. Nobody? Well, who else does? Jack. Jesus, woman. What are you saying? Well, he knows we're here. So bloody what? He's 100% reliable. I've known him longer than I've known you. So he's more reliable than me? Oh, I didn't say that. Anyway, they don't know where we are exactly. I gave them the slip. A Mercedes? You gave a Mercedes a slip in that pile of junk? Yeah. I hope you couldn't have. I mean, it's, it's just not a good enough car. You're just not a good enough driver. Don't get bloody patronizing with me. I gave them the slip. I tricked the bastards. Well, maybe that's just what they wanted you to think. Oh, no, you think you're pretty shit hot, but you're not the only person in the bloody world that can drive a car. So shove it! Don't you talk to me like that. Don't you ever talk to me like that. You're talking to me a damn well, please. Then you can fucking talk to yourself. I don't have to stand here and risk my own life. Or did you forget that? You don't like it? Piss off! Go on, get out! Here, take the car. Go! Up yours, prick! Bitch! Bitch! Yeah! bomb in your bag. It's the biggest bag. It was a big bomb. Yeah, sure as hell was. 
Jackie, no wonder those bastards in the Mercedes keep their distance. Yeah, I suppose you ought to go down and tell Jack, huh? Here, yeah, I'll go see him. Will you be okay? I can take care of myself. Besides, there's a shotgun in the wardrobe. Hey! Don't get stuck on the road rail bridge, huh? Cowpoke went riding out one dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw a plowing through the ragged sky in a cloud of Yippee-yi-yi! Their horns were black and shiny, and their hot breath he could feel. A bullet fear went through them as they thundered through the sky. Are they both there? Come on, don't go! Don't let them blow your head off! Oh, yippee! Oh, shit! Oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Oh God, Jack, where do you keep your ammo?
six. Nah. Must be money or power then. You offended the mafia? CIA? Your land revenue? Nope. I got a plan. At last, a plan. Seems to me. The only way to stop these people is for you to die. I hate it. You'll be staying at me mate's place up the back of Wanaroa. He won't mind, he owes me a favour. No one knows he's there, not even his missus. He did the same thing a few years back himself. He dodged the maintenance. Daisy went in to see the cops in Westport this morning. She's a great liar, Daisy. They'll be looking for you soon. They'll never find you, though. You'll be presumed dead. You talked about heading for the hills before, but we talked you out of it. We figured there's no way a couple of townies like you could survive long up here. Is she going to tell the cops that? She probably has already. What's up? Oil pressure's dropped through the floor. It's starting to heat up. Jack, this is no time to play games. Are you serious? Jack, how dodgy is this situation? Motor will seize in a minute. Could someone cause this to happen deliberately? I suppose so. They could drain out most of the oil. But no one knew we were flying until just before we took off. How the hell could they know? Stop! We're crashing! Why aren't we crashing? These things can glide pretty good. Will it glide to the airport? Not that good. We've got about 10 minutes to find somewhere clear and flat to put it down. There's not a hell of a lot of clear and flat about. I'll try and put it down in that clearing in the valley down there. That's a clearing? Tighten your seat belts. Downs in the stock market. Until he jerked this done, that pissed me off. I know you got out of that alive. Yes, sir. In fact, when you look at what's been thrown at you, I say you're doing pretty well. 007 would be proud of us. <laughs> Cheers, Veneer. Yeah, Reminds yeah, me of the belt, hot and sticky. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Germans were talking about 007. Germans? Yeah, in Los Angeles. I remember thinking how strange they think James Bond is a woman. Did she get a bit of a knock on the head back there? I don't feel good. My neck hurts. <sighs> Shit, we're in the middle of the bush. No, we're not. We're about four miles from a farmhouse. We'll be back well before dark. OK, Mr and Mrs Jack Robinson. A room with a view. You're on my credit card, so go easy on the booze. Alf Winters, you're dead. I'll square it all up, Jack. You better. Keep a low profile. I got a plane crash to report. Jack. Thanks for everything. No problem. See you later. The Western press refuses to admit the contribution. My God, I know that guy. Retarded, ignorant. How can you know him? He's that South African prick. What's his name? Pierre Mueller. The economic sanctions 
before the United States Congress right now will hurt most of the very people that the liberal pressure groups claim they represent. Go on, turn them off, he makes me sick. It is time these foreign critics understood the progress we have made and the difficulties we face. It's one of the Germans who thought 007 was a woman. I'm sorry. You can watch whatever you like. Here, turn over, let me rub your neck. Mm. He's not Germany, South African. And I don't know whether he thinks James Bond's a woman or not. They were just saying something like that. Mm. You bump on the head made me not silly, but remember things that I, I thought I'd almost forgotten. Piet Mueller was at that meeting in L.A. Do you think they're after you? It was my car you were driving when the brakes went out. Bomb in my bag? The helicopter attack? <clears throat> Hello? Yes. Evans. Alf Winters. Winters, where the hell are you? I want to talk to you. Start talking? Face to face. All right, smart ass, then you're going to have to tell me where you are. You've got a warrant out for me. Yeah, well, with people shooting up your house from helicopters filled with military hardware and then falling out of the sky, it's pretty hard to make my case that you're a dangerous paranoid stick. Anyway, I thought you were headed for certain death in the Southern Alps. I changed my mind. <laughs> It wouldn't have worked anyway. Look, Evans, we're not running any further. We talked it over. We're going to take these bastards on. That's why I want to talk to you. Yeah, hang on. Look, just give yourself up. We'll look after you. No. All right, then. Have it your way. I'll come to you. On my hand. Now, where are you? There'll be a note delivered to the Greymouth Police Station tomorrow morning, naming the time and place we meet. So, Evans, don't tell anyone. Well, Alf, we'll get a shock. It's not even on. Well, even so, there may be some electricity left in it. Melissa. Electricity is not like a tap that you turn on and it fills things up. It's either on or it's off. That's it. Well, you know how the hairdryer makes the radio go funny? Doesn't that mean there's electricity left in it? Yeah, but only does it when it's going. Well, I'm telling you, it does it when it's not even plugged in. So there must be some electricity left in it. radio beacon. It sends out a signal. It was in the hairdryer. What was it transmitting now? No, the battery's flat. It transmits when you use the dryer and charges the battery at the same time. That time at the motel in Auckland. Every time I used the hairdryer, they knew where we were. So did I. We can't go in there. They're going to recognize us. We can't go in there either. You first. Mm. 
Maybe we all look the same to them. What do you mean, we? Do you want Is anyone on home? Detective Inspector Evans, Auckland CID. You got a message for me? Evans? That's right. Oh, look. You did that, would you? There's a Mr. Evans here from Auckland CID. Evans? That's what I said. I'm afraid Inspector Evans from Auckland has already been in, sir. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Sitting on the porch of the tumble down house, me and the local in cat and mouse. End up the street, the cop walks by, that cop gave me the evil eye. Ah, there's a good place across the road where we can watch the front door. We'll make him wait ten minutes. Any sign of anything funny will split. Ah, we've got about an hour. Want another drink? What I've got. Right on. Excuse me, sir. Do you see this man or this woman in here this morning? Bloody Evans must be in with them. I didn't see anyone, man. I can't even see you. I met a man bereft of wit Between his ears was chicken shit The more I think, the less I see That he could do to me Right on Make noise, will you? No, but you will. No, I won't. Uh, um, mm, yes, I will. Uh, I haven't done uh, anything yet. Oh, uh, I know. Uh.
the man, held a high time, rise with his blade, green buzz love. Yeah, so you think you're smart, don't you? Well, I'm going to finish you off with one shot. drinking champagne tonight. Then you'll have a toast. 007, down she goes. You talk too much. Yet? I was aiming for his legs. I want to talk to him. How did they know where we were? They tapped my phone. Huh. They must have. I was careful. Didn't tell anyone. Not even the missus. I thought you said you dropped the charges. I did. They must have done that last night. Sure. Right. Look, I don't blame you. I find it hard to believe myself. The bastards had police ID with my name on it. They threw me in jail. Not to talk like hell to get out of it. That note of mine was in a sealed envelope. If they took it, how did you know where we were? The boys at the station haven't it and photocopied it. Never trust a cop. They were having this toast and they raised their wine glasses and said, uh, 007, down she goes. Yeah, I saw that prick Mueller on the TV. He was trying to tell us that if the Yanks pull their money out of South Africa, It'll hurt the blacks worse than them. You talk about the bullshit. You know, there's billions involved. Pepsi franchise alone got to be worth a fortune. We've got a team heading for South Africa. Yeah, the Mavericks. Don't know when exactly. The cops try to keep it a secret to avoid trouble. I think it's pretty soon, though. I'll plan the security. It's tomorrow. Double O seven. 007. 007. 007, down she goes. She sounds like they're gonna blow up the bloody aeroplane. But why did that? They invited them. They'd get the blame. The protest movement. Oh, imagine the backlash. American Congress wouldn't pass the bill. All that American money would stay in South Africa. Evil bastards. We've got to bring airport security and warn them. Go over that plane with a fine tooth comb. There's always bomb scares when any team heads for South Africa. Then they'll find the bomb. Could just be a tiny device in the control computer. Or some idiot hiding at the end of the runway with one of those disposable plastic ground air missiles. Anything. Oh, well, we gotta do something. We gotta get to Auckland. Stop the plane. No, wait. I'll, I'll ring Mr. Whitten. Maybe he can get some more information for us. 
Mueller's a client at his firm. Yes? Mr. Witten, Miss Melissa Jones calling you from Greymouth, New Zealand, on line six. Hello? Hello, Mr. Witten? Melissa, how are you? Uh, how nice to hear from you. Look, I, I, I don't have any answers uh, for you just yet. They're still going through your father's accounts. Uh, it seems he was the original absent-minded professor. Uh, they're just a total shambles. Well, I, I wasn't ringing about the will. Uh, I want to talk to you about Mr. Mueller. Mueller, the soft drink man? Yeah, the, the millionaire. The South African. Hi, Ron. Evening, mate. Take that to Queenstown. Queenstown, two dollars, please, mate. Roger Nee Strajnov and a funny name. Funny bloke. Well, I can't believe it. I mean, uh, Muller's a ruthless man, but uh, I'll, I'll have a discreet look amongst his files and see if I can spot anything. Are you sure you're going to be all right? I'm okay. I can take care of myself. You just be very careful. Well, there goes your radio beacon. Let the bastards follow that. Got us through the checkpoint. Saved us 50 bucks. Listen, you two get in the back. Stay out of sight. Try and get a bit of sleep, eh? We've got a plane to catch tomorrow. One good thing about being in fear of your life every second. The sex is terrific. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Thanks. Frank? Hang on a minute, Bill. I just want to have a talk with you. Jesus, you're a hard man to find. First of all, you're in Greymouth, then Dead Man's, then Queenstown. Queenstown, was I? Come on, Bill. Where are they? You can trust me. Up yours. This is official Evans. We're looking for Winters and Jones. Well, so is every cop in the country. Yeah, but they're with you. So what are you going to do, Frank? Arrest me? Satisfied. Yeah, that'll do for a start. Hey! Ooh. Get out! Get out of the way! George, stop that now! I, I wouldn't lose my car! Get out! Get out of it! What's Evans! Evans! training school you did. Look, you might as well pull over. What the hell are you talking about? They're sticking to us like shit to a blanket. They'll radio ahead. There'll be others waiting for us. We're playing their game. This is what they get paid to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give ourselves up. Trust me. Don't pull that cop shit on me, Winters. Come on, give it up. You haven't got a hope. Like hell. That's my girl. Bastard. No, I don't. 
I don't see what you mean either. Woke up this morning to another day. A dangerous game that we have to play. Never say die. I just can't get real close to you. But I keep on trying. Never say die. Say die, eh, Alf? Till you're dead. Then you can't. Hey, why are you taking my keys? Just watch us, right? No, 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 it's, it's, it's all right. He, he only wants to look in the booth to back. see if there's anybody oh, there. All right, it's all right then. Slack bastard. I'm going to kick some ass when I get back to the office. That's if they'll have your back. How are we going to stop that plane? Easy. I just leap aboard and say, hands up, this is a cocker. And the pilot says, don't you mean a stick up? I say, no, it's a cocker. I left my gun at home. You shut up, for Christ's sakes. Yes, yeah, shut up. You shut up. Listen, there are hundreds of bloody lives at stake, and all you can do is sit there and tell your stupid jokes. Yeah. Shut up yourself, Evans. You're just a cop on the make. As soon as we're no further use to you, you'll drop us in it like hot turds. Never trust a cop, remember? Listen, jerk. Those pricks on the boat wanted to arrest me. They thought I'd been to Queenstown, so someone's been talking to the killers. They had police ID with my name on it. They tapped my phone. They trumped up charges against you, jerk. So someone's got some pretty important cops in their pocket, and I'm at the arse end of it. I've been betrayed by my own people. Like it or not, and I don't. We're in this together. If Witten doesn't do something soon, we're all in trouble. What did he say? They said Mr. Witten's on his way here. What? He left a message. He said he has what we want and he'll be at the taxi stand at Auckland International Airport at 7 o'clock. He's bringing it himself? That's what he said. <sighs> Is that old bitch staring at us? This is not a great place to stand. Excuse me, miss. Those people have just left. This road heads to Morinsville. Well, that's on the way to Auckland. It's the long way around. We got two hours. We gotta get some gas. We haven't got enough to make it. I gotta get rid of some gas. You finally noticed.
Haven't I seen your Sheila somewhere before, mate? Is she on the telly or something? Yeah, one of the ads. Oh, nice. Have one for me. Watch your mouth, Lal. Like you pulled your pants up over the wrong pile. Which way? I'll go right. You said to go this way. You did. I asked, and you went. My neck is still sore. I was just moving my head. Anyway, it's a good idea. Nobody uses this coast road anymore. See, it was a good idea. Right, coast road. Step on it. What's this bullshit? Bugger to find that, Bruce. What's happening? Oh, nothing much. A couple of murderers wandering around the district. Seen any murderers? <laughs> you would know one if you fell over them. Two jokers and a Sheila in a red falcon. Yeah, there was a red falcon here, eh? But I only had one joker and a Sheila in it. This one was in the car. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Mm, what a darling. But not the guys. Don't know. But this Sheila. Ooh, I noticed her. Can I keep the photo? You better be right about this. Which way do they go? Up north. Hey, you got a phone number? Pig. Here at Mangatarata, suspects headed through here. Highway 10 is covered at 19 Mile Road. How about Highway 25? It's covered at Pippi Road. Coast Road? It's not covered. Guess that's me. How is it that a couple of totally disorganized yobbos like you two can evade a highly sophisticated police force with inside information? It's like the hunter's dog that comes back without the rabbit. The hunter asks, how come? The dog replies, he was running for his life. I was only running for my dinner. July drive. I'll last a bit longer. Oh, we can stop at Cleveland. About 20 miles from here. Done. Anyone want a fruit juice or something? Mm, I'll have a tropical. And a cookie. Uh, 412, just past Kawakawa Bay, over. Roger, right, 412. Uh, keep going to Cleveland. Uh, you're in Manukau from there. Cleveland it is. Over. Wake me when we get to the airport. <laughs> He's asleep already. Uh, 412, I'm at Clevedon. No sign of them. Any other sightings over? It's a negative 412. Okay, guess it's time to come home. Don't move. Over. 
sending you. Go outside and need some sleep. Oh, no. Might as well pull over. Something like that. It's a bloody chopper. We're in the big league now. What will they throw at us next? The armed defender squad? Good for me. You did. I think we're just about finished. Like hell we are. Nobody tries to kill me for nothing. Or not. Now hear this! My men have orders to open 
you bloody piker, Evan! Any attempt is made to move that car! I repeat, now hear this! My men have orders to open fire if any attempt is made to move that car! They will shoot to kill! I repeat, they will shoot to kill! Christ, the gonna blow us apart if we move. We've got no choice! It's good to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. Good grief. What happened to you? Uh, oh, we got caught in a shower. Alf Winters. Uh, Witten. Yeah. Quickly. My car's over there behind the taxi stand. Muller has men everywhere. Come on. I know where the bomb is. Where is it? Shh, don't say a word. I told you there are spies everywhere. one there. Ten dozen crates of soft drinks with personalized labels. He calls it Maverick Aid. Due to be shipped on flight 007. Ajax Botling. Now that's Mueller's company. That'll be it, all right. I've checked this whole place out. This is not going to be easy. Flight 007 is due to board in just a few minutes. Security is all the way on the top floor. I think it's best if we split up, all right? Now, Melissa and I will take this entrance here. We'll try to catch the escalator. I want you to go around front and get on that elevator, okay? I think you've got the much better chance of getting there, so you take the invoice. Now, go. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Buildings near the taxi stand. Near the taxi stand? Hmm. Would you know what time flight 007 boards? Global Airlines? That's it. That's it? I better hurry. Thanks. Hey, watch out! And so, after spending about a half a million dollars hiring thugs to kill you and 
bribing police administrators to very little effect, I might add. I decided just to come on over and do it myself. It's a pity, though. It uh, really would have been so much nicer and cleaner if it had been an accident. It's been beautiful, really. Excuse me! Excuse me, man! Excuse me! Asshole! And so I guess all those years of research finally paid off. It seems just before Dad died, he made some sort of breakthrough that was worth billions and billions and and billions of dollars. Oh, Buller. It was so upset. Apparently you stumbled on some some kind of secret soft drink slogan. <laughs> Let's pull in here. about the bitch comment it's we've got a lot to talk about Well, I guess, Evans, if she blows up, you'll be off the hook. I'm just seconds away from being a multi-billionaire. You guy, I get it all. Aren't you happy for me? I can hardly wait. I don't have to wait. Tell the poor bastard who owns his bike to alert the authorities. They'll be looking for us. What do we do now? We wait. What do we do while we're waiting? waiting? Morning to 
Sit down.